Today we're going to be talking about vlogging cameras. I personally own a few cameras as you guys have seen on my channel. Uh, the RX100 Compact Camera Series and the Full Frame Camera Series, the A7 II and above. We're going to be using three key factors to be able to break down which kind of vlogging cameras is for you. So if you're interested, keep on watching. Now before we continue, I need to share with you guys that this video is by no means representing all the camera brands out there but it's rather these 4 different lineups of cameras that I personally own. We'll be mainly focusing on the video quality, not so much of the audio quality so just keep that in mind as we go along. Now as I bring out the 4 different types of cameras which are going to be shown today, all the relevant test footages will be shown on this top right corner. Now the first contestant is this Insta360 GO. This Insta360 GO costs about 200 and will be representing the action camera line. Now I know there are different cameras out there in this line such as the Insta360 ONE X, ONE R, GoPro Hero 8 uh, and so on and so forth. But this is the one which I recently bought and I think it falls under this uh, category of action cameras. Now our second lineup is the RX100 line. Now this RX100 uh, basically represents the compact camera series. Uh, this is by no means the cheapest compact camera out there. Uh, I, but I personally chosen it for the quality. You can find other ranges of compact cameras from 500 to about 1000 plus. But basically this is the Sony's version of a compact camera. And this one represents the second category of compact cameras. Now the third tier of cameras I, I'm able to show you. But actually they represent the APS-C line. It is the Sony A6400. This A6400 represents the APS-C or crop sensor line. Uh, they are a tier below the full frame cameras but they work very well as they have a flip screen. Now you can see from the test footage up here that it has a flip screen and it has very good quality. Uh, from the video that I'm shooting right here, it's actually shot with the A6400 with a prime lens and the quality is really good. So this is the APS-C crop category. Now the last one is the full frame lineup which is my a7 II with the 16 to 35 Kauzas lens. Now this uh, focal range of 16 to 35 is widely used by YouTubers who vlogs. So this camera is really relevant if you have a much higher budget compared with all those that I mentioned. And you'll definitely be able to produce pro results with this. Now I have a whiteboard with empty grids here. Let's fill in some information and as we go along, I'll explain to you guys how we're going to create all these cameras that we have mentioned over here. Now the first one we're going to have is Q. So the letter Q here which I've just written re will represent quality. The letter C here will represent convenience. Each camera has its own size but whichever is convenient is going to be a factor for you if you're carrying a camera around. P. P will stand for price. Each camera has a different price range and depending on your budget, you might not be able to afford the most expensive camera in the lineup that we're going to be talking about today. So that's going to be a factor in the evaluation that we have here. Last but not least, we will have T which will represent the total score out of 30 seeing that each element here represents 10. I'll fill up the different cameras that we're talking about today and we're going to be going in depth into each one of these factors and going to give a summary of each one of it. Now okay the chart is up here so let's get started with our first contestant. Okay this is the Insta360 GO which represents the action camera line. Now for the Insta360 I would say that the quality is quite acceptable. Um, it's definitely above average in my opinion for 1080p so I'll give it about a 6. Convenience as you guys can see from my test footage you can literally put this anywhere so I will not give it full points but I'll give it probably 9. Now in terms of price it only costs about 200 and uh, once you convert to a local currency for Singapore dollars it's about 300. So it isn't dirt cheap, but it isn't that expensive. So I'll give it a 7. Which brings the total score, hmm, 22. Okay, as we go along different cameras, do leave me down in the comments below if you agree with my scoring or if you think I should give higher or lower. So let's move this aside. The next one I'll be talking about is the RX100 Compact Camera Series. So I'll say for the quality of this RX100, it's really impressive. I'll give it easily at about an 8. Now for convenience, it is literally very small. Um, it's not as small as the Insta360 GO, so I'll give it a 7. For its price, it really costs quite a bit. It's about $1,000 even now. So I would say the price, I'll give it a slightly lower score uh, of about 5. 
so we will have a total of 20 all right so this is the scoring so far let's move this aside and take out my imaginary a6400 camera which is here all right so the a6400 has really good quality as you guys have seen i'm always shooting with this on my youtube channel so i would say the quality is really high i'll give it a nine its convenience um isn't as convenient as the rx100 um, so i'll definitely give it slightly lower than that i'll give it a six for its price, the pricing is definitely really good, definitely much better than the RX100 but not better than the Insta360 GO so I will give it a 6 so we have a total of 21 alright, so let's bring out the full frame range a7 II with the 16 to 35. Okay, let's not include the lens in here. Let's just talk about the camera body and uh, the quality that it has, right? So, I would say the quality of this is definitely very good. Um, I'll give it a 10. Convenience, as you guys have seen, the lens is rather big. So, it won't definitely be lower than the A6400. I'll give it a 5. So for the price, I wanted to give 5.5 but we just have to go with whole numbers, right? So let's stick with 6. So I would say it literally has the same as the A6400. But the downside to this which I haven't mentioned in this chart is that this doesn't have a flip screen. So it definitely loses out in the vlogging game and that will have a minus of 2 points, right? So overall, you can see from this chart that I actually gave the Insta360 the highest. So why would the scoring of action cameras is highest? It's because I would say getting the right moment with the easier setup is the most important. There's no point in missing the shot if you have the very high resolution cameras, but rather get a slightly lesser quality shot, but be able to get that particular moment. Now, this a particular Insta360 camera, you can literally mount it on your chest and walk around and just record with a press of a button. You're hardly able to do that with a DSLR camera or crop sensor camera body such as the A6400. So all in all, this is my evaluation of all the different lineups that I personally own. Uh, leave me down in the comments below what do you think about this grading that I have here and if you have differing opinions or you think some scoring could be higher and lower. So I hope you guys like this particular video that I came up with grading these different ranges of cameras that I have. Now, as you guys know, there are limitations towards all these examples that I give uh, due to the brands and due to the particular camera model that I have. Now, even though we use all these different cameras for comparison, there's a reason why I bought each one of them and each one of them has definitely have a place in my arsenal of gears. Which one of these cameras do you prefer? Or do you prefer other camera models that I haven't mentioned here? Leave me down in the comments below, what do you think? If you're interested in this kind of topics, I have a playlist right here which cover different photography topics and different themes uh, on cameras uh, such as this. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Do also share this with your friends for all those who are stuck on the fence regarding different camera models for vlogging. If not, I'll see you guys in the next video.